everybody. This review is going to be just a little different than normal. Normally, WTF Cinema, as you are probably aware, is me walking you through the plot of a movie and pointing out any problems along the way, things that don't make sense, plot holes, bad acting, and maybe even cracking a joke or two. At least I think I'm cracking jokes. I've been informed frequently that I'm not, but I try. Anyway, none of that's going to work for this movie. This is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. I don't use a phrase like that lightly. I know what I'm saying. I know what it's up against. But it's going to be everything I can do just for you and I to be able to go through the plot of this movie together. I can't point out the things that don't make sense because there's not a single scene in this movie that does. So, all this review is going to be is you and I walking through this simple movie about a guy whose dog is missing. And then we'll revisit it at the end. This is wrong. A movie opens, as all great movies do, with a fireman taking a crap in the middle of the street while his buddies watch him as a nearby van burns. Our main character, Dolph, wakes up at 7.60 a.m. every morning. He soon notices that his dog is missing, but he's, he's not that concerned yet. He's more concerned about getting his mail, which includes a stamped envelope with no address or return address. And that envelope is never addressed. I don't know why I even mentioned it. I shouldn't have. The movie doesn't talk about it again. Oh, also, there's a flyer for a pizza place that just opened up. He briefly talks to his neighbor, who is very defensive about the fact that he never jogs, despite the fact that everybody in the neighborhood sees him jogging every morning. His neighbor has not seen his missing dog, and decides to jump off in his car and drive off and find a new life for himself. Dolph then calls the pizza place from the flyer at 8 a.m., when most pizza places are open, to ask them questions about the logo on the flyer. See, he's very concerned because it's a rabbit on a motorcycle, but the delivery is done by car, and there's no rabbit. Now, he and the woman on the phone aren't 100% sure if the rabbit is meant to represent speed. So she goes and checks with her manager, and the manager says, yes, yeah, the rabbit's there to represent speed. But then they talk about, well, then what does it mean that he's on a motorcycle? Because now it's the motorcycle that's fast and not the rabbit. This conversation goes on for a while, and it's actually quite interesting. Dolph's gardener, a Mexican gentleman with a French accent, calls him on the phone from a couple feet away and asks Dolph to come see something that's gone amiss in the backyard. But Dolph has to get back to this logo debate. I feel like I haven't done a good job yet of expressing how dialogue in this movie is delivered. It's like every single character doesn't quite understand what the dialogue they're delivering actually means. I'm going to give you just a brief sample of a completely picked at random conversation from this movie. Can't pass through, sir. Street's closed. Turn around. What happened here? Why do you want to know? I'm from the neighborhood, and I, I drive by here every day. So I'm curious why there's a charred car here. Uh-huh. Well, let me go find out. After that conversation, Dolph shows up at work, parking in the handicapped spot, and goes inside. Dolph works at a travel agency where it's always raining inside the office. After five minutes of work, it's time for a lunch break, and everybody goes out to eat their lunch except for Dolph, who goes out to get into his car to go home. Except he's confronted by his co-workers about the fact that he keeps coming to work every day, despite the fact that he was fired three months ago. He gets pretty defensive about it, and, you know, he just... He likes being there. He likes, you know, working. And they point out, well, you never even turn your computer on. You only pretend to work. And he says, so what's the problem? And then he leaves. Arriving back home, Dolph finds flowers and a card about his missing dog on the front porch, along with a phone number. But he's once again interrupted by Gardner, who wants to talk to him about what's wrong in the backyard. What is it? It's kind of hard to explain. 
I don't know how it happened or why, but the palm tree is no longer a palm tree. No. What are you talking about? What? Unbelievable. While asking the gardener to replace his new pine tree with another palm tree, or maybe just figure out how to turn this one back, a free pizza arrives from the pizza place. Dolph throws out the free pizza, but the gardener grabs it for himself before leaving to buy a new palm tree. Dolph calls the number on the card, and a mysterious voice tells him that if he wants to find out about his dog, to meet him tomorrow at a particular set of longitude and latitude coordinates. Meanwhile, inside the pizza box is a note from the girl that Dolph was speaking to on the phone about the logo. She loved the conversation so much that she would like to have sex with him. So Gardner decides to pretend to be Dolph, and despite the wild accent, she believes it. The next day at the coordinates, Dolph is informed that he will soon be meeting with Master Chang. He is given a book to read while he waits. Meanwhile, Pizza Girl tells Gardner that it was the best night of her life, and that she's going to leave her husband and live with him forever. Gardner's okay with this because he knows she still thinks he's Dolph. Down in his truck, Gardner finds that somebody has painted part of his truck blue. And the guy has an intention of painting the rest of the truck blue until the gardener says, no, I like it red. Finally, Dolph gets to meet Master Chang. Master Chang reveals that he owns a secret organization that is dedicated to proactively preventing animal abuse. Now it does this by kidnapping pets from perfectly happy homes where they are loved so that the owners can realize how much they love the pet because the pet is gone. Then the, the, the organization returns the pet and the owner is so overjoyed to finally have their pet back that they never ever neglect or abuse their pet. Yeah. That's... moving on. Unfortunately, in the case of Dolph's dog napping, the van crashed, burned, and the driver died. And the dog got away. So Master Chang has hired the world's greatest pet detective to track him down. He also gives Dolph a book and says, That other book that you got an hour ago, that was my first book. That book's trash. This book's better. It's my new book. It will help you form a telepathic bond with your dog. At 7.60 the next morning, while trying to establish a psychic link with his dog, the great pet detective shows up. The detective asks several questions about the dog's habit, but then refuses to look at a picture of him. He does ask if he can have some of the dog's feces, though, but Dolph doesn't happen to have any laying around. Luckily, the detective finds some out in the yard. Master Chang passes a psychic message through the gardener that he needs to meet with Dolph, and it has a bad effect on the gardener. He's not feeling so good. Dolph runs inside to get Gardner a glass of water, he fills it all the way up, as far up to the brim as you can, and then carries the water outside, and while that's going on, Gardner dies of a heart attack, the ambulance comes and takes him away, but right before they drive off, the paramedic tells Dolph that Master Chang really needs to meet with him today. This is when the neighbor, remember the neighbor who jogs but doesn't jog? He calls Dolph. He is driven so far away now that he is in the middle of a vast and endless desert just about at the edge of existence. And he's finally come to terms with the fact that he does jog, but he still finds it difficult to talk about. At the meeting, Master Chang tells Dolph that he had a dream that Dolph was walking down the street with blood on his face when a bus drove by, and Dolph's dog was on the bus, and the dog gets off the bus and they're happy. Chang also tells Dolph that he has a new problem. Another dog that he kidnapped from another loving home can't go home because immediately after he kidnapped that dog, the owner went out and bought a new dog and now she does not want the old dog back. He said he's never had this happen in all the years he's been doing this. So he wants Dolph to take care of the orphan dog until he can get his dog back. But Dolph doesn't actually want the orphan dog. He just wants his own dog back, so he, he begs off. Oh yeah, the new orphan dog is... Also a child, as it turns out. Dolph still says no. When he gets back home, Dolph runs into the pizza girl, who is now ready to move in. When he announces that he, he is Dolph, she assumes that he must have just changed his face, but she belongs to him and only him. Dolph can't really think of a reason to object, so she moves in. 
That night, Dahl finally manages to make a telepathic connection with his dog, able to pet his dog over a long distance, which is a skill I would love to have, until he's interrupted by Pizza Girl, who announces that she's pregnant with his child. The next morning, Gardner, remember Gardner? He died of a heart attack the day before. Gardner tells Dolph that he has a plan for making the new baby palm tree look taller. He's just going to build like a giant mound of dirt and then plant the tree up at the top. So Dolph goes to work and Pizza Girl runs into Gardner in the kitchen and says, Oh, you've changed your face back again. At work, where it's always raining indoors, Dolph is called into his boss's office where it doesn't rain. Luckily, she supplies a bunch of towels so employees can dry off to talk to her. She orders Dolph never to set foot in the office again because his presence is disturbing his co-workers who actually work there. Dolph is feeling pretty distracted. He just I'm double sorry. lost his job, his just, dog is still I'm missing, and, you know, this pizza girl moved in and is pregnant with his child despite the fact that I don't think they ever had sex. So he rear ends another car. It happens. The driver gets out, slowly walks up to Dolph, and gives him a message from Master Chang. The pet detective has made a lot of progress finding the dog, and Master Chang says Dolph needs to go meet with him. Meanwhile, Pizza Girl is trying to get Gardner to help her pick out a name because science has proven that the first name of a child determines their entire personality for their whole life. For example, she explains that everyone who has ever been named Bruno has hung themselves. And then she goes into labor and demands that Gardner takes her to the beach so she can give birth. Dolph shows up at the detective's office, which is located in the back of a pharmacy, and the detective shows Dolph that not only did he find one of the dog's turds, but by hooking it up to a machine, we can see the memory of the turd. And so he shows this video to Dolph. And from this video, he was able to determine that the dog was kidnapped. Dolph explains that he already knew the dog was kidnapped. And the detective gets very upset that he was not given this information up front. And at just that moment... The pharmacist rushes back and says Master Chang has ordered the detective to stop working on the case because Dolph wouldn't adopt the child. The detective attacks Dolph, who leaves with blood on his face. Outside, the painter has showed up and completely painted Dolph's blue car red, which causes Dolph not to recognize his car, and so he decides just to walk home. At the beach, Gardner runs backwards to the beach where he's confronted by a preteen boy and Pizza Girl. The boy is his son. Gardner then stabs Pizza Girl with a broken wine bottle, but it doesn't stop her. And then the scene repeats over and over again until Gardner wakes up to find himself in a coffin that's just a being buried alive, much to his relief. And finally, as he walks down the street, Dolph's dog gets off a bus and runs into his arms as Master Chang watches on. Everything went exactly according to plan. Oh, but that's not it. We have one last scene. Can you guess what it is? If you could, I'd be surprised. The final scene is of the neighbor driving through an endless desert void. The end. From this review, you have gathered that this movie is strange and weird. I hope I've conveyed that. What I can't properly convey is how deeply unsettling and uncomfortable this movie is to watch. It feels wrong, which I know is the title of the movie. Every scene of dialogue, every... everything that happens in this movie... Every line of dialogue is what I meant to say. Every scene and every line of dialogue is meant to make you feel like something is just slightly off kilter. Like the alarm going from 759 to 760. It tweaks your brain in an uncomfortable way. You know what this movie feels like, really? Have you seen the, the meme of we fed 10,000 hours of Olive Garden commercials into a computer and had it generate an Olive Garden strip? Endless pasta, endless pasta. That's what this movie seems like. It feels like somebody loaded all of Netflix into a machine and told it to just make a movie. Because the plot doesn't make sense. The characters don't react to anything normally. The setting is bizarre. The dialogue is delivered like nobody can believe the words that are coming out of their own mouths. I think this movie's amazing. 
Because it's doing this on purpose, and it does it masterfully. It's a work of art that somehow they managed to make a movie where every single scene does not make sense. Everything is off. Everything is uncomfortable. And yet, it tells a basic story that you're able to hold on to. Despite the weirdness of the gardener and the being buried alive and the pizza girl, guy loses his dog, guy gets his dog back, all because there's an organization that does this to make sure people appreciate what they have. Despite the fact that you don't understand anything that's happening, you're able to understand the movie. I just think that's stunning. I know I'm supposed to be ranting and raving about how weird this is, and it's weird. But I'm impressed by it. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see you guys next time. And uh Gosh, I really hope there's not another, like, rapey thing in the next movie. Because that would be kind of three things, three movies in a row. Although, I will argue that the gardener didn't really rape the pizza girl. Because, yes, he pretended to be Dolph, but then they had time to talk and get to know each other before the sex. So she could have opted out. Like, she got to know him a little bit. The only thing that she had wrong was the name. And I would argue giving somebody a fake name is not the same as pretending to be a different person. Anyway, no rapists in the next movie is my point. That's my point.